Let's say we notice that the time is wrong, and we want to connect to all our devices and check the time on those. This way we don't have to SSH into every device and run the show clock command. First thing we need to do is remove the device specific arguments from the connect handler method. We will want to assign these to variables and put this into a loop. Let's assume all of these devices are of the type Cisco IOS and their username and password are always the same since we're using TACX in our production environment. Of course, the IP address is going to change for each device. One thing I like to do is use a doc string to easily create a list. I'll demonstrate this in the interactive shell. So this notation, this doc string actually creates a string and it begins with a new line, ends with a new line. And really it's just one complete string with new lines in between each IP address. And so what I'm doing with that, have the string, let's call it the string X. What I want to do is I want to make a list actually that I can iterate over. And if I was to split this into lines. Notice I'll get here a blank entry because of this new line here. So what I can do is I can strip out the white space first and then split lines. And now I have a list that has each of my IP addresses in it as a separate object. And that's essentially what I'm doing right here. I'm creating the string. I'm stripping out the white space on either side. And then I'm splitting it. So this becomes a list of all these. And I'm assigning that to, to devices. It becomes very easy to edit. You don't have to worry about doing quotes around everything and a comma. Normally you'd have to say this, comma, such and such. this. So it's nice and easy to just lay out your stuff here, cut and paste if you like, and just have uh, Python do the hard work of splitting it up for you. And uh, since all of these devices are Cisco IOS, they'll have the same admin username, and they're all set to the same password, uh, which would be common if you're using TACX in your environment. So the only thing that's changing is this. So I could do that a couple ways. So here we're going to say IP equals device and let's say device type, whoops, say device type equals device type. Username equals username, password equals password. Okay, so we're going to put this in a loop. We're going to say for device in devices. And we have to indent all this. So now, device. is our list of devices. 
So it's going to loop around, and on each loop, it's going to assign the next one to device. So the IP is going to be the device from this list, and then the rest of these are just going to be taken from these pre-declared variables here. And in Python, we don't like to go past column 79. Uh, and the reason for that is in case someone's, uh, some user or future user of your uh, code is reading it and they're editing it and they're using a terminal that only has 80 columns, they'll be able to see it all. We're going to follow that recommendation, that style. And that's why we have this little line here to tell us when we're going over. So let's save this and let's see what happens when we run this. And we got an error already. Value, unsupported device type. Okay, so I made, made a mistake somewhere. Okay, so I think the problem is I have this comma here. Let's save this. Let's try running this again. Okay, we get our first result. We've got our second result. Looks like our clocks are not in sync. And we get our first error. And what's happening here, I expected this, authentication failure. So it turns out one of our devices isn't configured properly, has either has the wrong password, maybe it doesn't go to our TACAC server, etc. But we fail to authenticate to this. And the problem is, is that the script stopped running when we hit this authentication failure. So we only managed to get to two of our devices out of a thousand. Now, if you were making some big change and you were running this against, you know, a hundred devices and the third one failed and it didn't get to the other 97, well, that would kind of stink. So, what we want to do is we want to make our script work such that it's going to catch this exception when it happens and move on. So let's go back into our script and handle this condition. So what we're going to do is we're going to use our friend try. We're going to indent again. And now we're going to look for an exception. Except and we're going to specify the name of the exception that we're expecting. And if this is the case, we're going to print a message. Authentication failed to device, which is the IP address. Let's do one other thing. Let's tell ourselves what we're connecting to each time we're connecting. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to print a special character 79 times. That's going to give me a little separator on my command line. And then I want to say a little message saying I'm connecting to device. and give the IP address. Let's save this. Let's try running it again. Okay, we've got a little separator here. Tells us who we're connecting to. We have our authentication failed here. Another surprise. We got a time add exception. Connection to device timed out. Turns out one of our routers is down. Perhaps the WAN link, perhaps there was a power outage at that site. So again, NetMeco failed to connect and we didn't catch this exception. We were just catching the authentication failure earlier. We caught that here, but we didn't catch this exception. So let's add this exception to our list of exceptions that we want to catch. 
And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to do something more generic. I'm going to say NetMiko uh, exceptions. And I'm going to list them here. So essentially, I'm creating a tuple that includes my two exceptions. Now I'm just going to match it on this tuple. Now, of course, I want to know which exception occurred when an exception occurs. Did I get a timeout or was it authentication? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to save the exception that happened as E. And then I'm going to do this. I'm going to say failed to device. And then we have print my exception. Let's see how that works. We have our authentication failed here. Here we have our device timed out. Beautiful, our script completed without error. How nice is that?